Because when you get married to your husband, the man that God has for you, you're going to have to be submitted to that man. Trusting that that man is submitting to Christ. If your husband is submitted to Christ, you are to submit to your husband. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and to another God's Little Makeup Artist Talk. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell. That way you're notified of all of my future uploads and hit the like button so that way more people can be introduced to this channel. If I can gear this conversation or gear this video towards not just myself, you know, edification for myself or encouragement for myself in this walk and in this waiting period, but prayerfully that I can encourage my sisters in Christ as well. As we wait, as I wait, I might blanket this in a lot of other videos by saying, oh, the things that we are waiting on. I don't want to blanket this video. I want to be specific in this video. I am waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord for my spouse. What that has looked like, it's not as bad as most would imagine that's on the outside looking in because I've had questions before. Are you married? Do you have any kids? No and no, I don't. I am 39 years old, I don't have any children. I am still single and I'm single with intentions. I am intentionally single waiting on the Lord for the individual that he has for me. To truly wait on God for your spouse can be like speaking Chinese or Spanish or a whole other language if it's something you've never done before. If you're so used to being in a relationship with someone, for most people, waiting is such a hard thing. It is one of the difficult things to do. Waiting on God's timing for something, it can be really tough when you don't trust that God is a promise keeper, when you think that God has forgotten about you, when you have doubts that God is actually gonna come through, a lot of times we settle. We settle for something or for someone that God never blessed, something that God has never said yes to. And I've been guilty of that. I've done it many a times. I've been engaged three times, one when I was 20, another when I was 28, and then the third time I was 34. Neither one of those men are bad men. It's just that those individuals were not the ones that God said yes to. So what I was doing was latching myself onto these relationships and getting engaged when really there was a void that I was trying to fill up. You know, like I said, I was always the one that was in a relationship for a long time. You know, whenever I would go through a breakup coming out of a serious relationship, I was always going out to the club and then finding attention elsewhere, whether it's it could be like just going out to eat, going to dinner. Being in the same space with a man, I settled for that for a long time with different faces. When each one didn't work out, there was another one, right? I didn't even know how to wait. I didn't know how to be by myself. So then the older I got, okay, then 20 years old came, I get engaged. That ended up not working out. 20, like I said, by the time the third engagement came around, that wasn't gonna work I, either. It, it's, it's, I walked away from my engagement, but by the third time I walked away from the third engagement, I needed time with the Lord and myself. I needed that personal growth. I needed for the Lord to come in and transform me because I was tired of being an angry woman. I was angry. I struggled with really bad anger. So the anger that I had from the areas in my life that has caused me to become angry, I took it all out on the men that I was with. I had really bad trust issues. So I would take that out on the men that I was with. 2019, I walked away from the third one, and then that was the start of me really going through that personal growth. And I was going through the growth, but I found myself in other situations. And it wasn't because, you know, I was going out looking for attention. I wasn't. You know, I go to work. People trying to talk to you at work. I tell them all no, but then I end up with someone who is extremely abusive, emotionally, verbally. Found myself in that for eight months. In 2020, it was uh, towards the end of 2020, going into 2021. After that, that's when I ended up with the woman. You know, if you guys have been watching my videos, you are familiar. You guys know that I talked about being in a, in an, uh, talked about being in a relationship with a woman, and that didn't go well either. Obviously, for obvious reasons. But there's something about waiting on who and what 
God has for you. Just because so much time has gone by because of my choices, God is so good that even still, that promise never went anywhere. You know, the Lord is the one that placed the desire for me to want to have a husband in me from jump anyway. Before I was ever even in my mother's womb, the Lord created me this way with the desire to want to be married and have a spouse and have a family. Children, I've had people ask if I have kids and you know, like I, I you know, then you have other people saying, oh, well, have you ever thought about getting your eggs frozen or something like that, freezing your eggs? No, I don't need to do all that. Me doing that is telling God that I don't trust him in his perfect timing. That's me telling God that I don't trust him. When God told Sarah and Abraham that they were gonna have a son a year from the point that God spoke to them, right? But God, he came to Abraham and Sarah and he let them know that they were going to have a son, that they were going to have a child. And they both laughed. They laughed at it because they were both old in age. And God still kept that promise. And this is even when, come on, Sarah couldn't wait and so she had her servant Hagar sleep with her husband Abraham. And that's where Ishmael came from. Hagar and Abraham had Ishmael. But even after going ahead of God and making the decision for themselves, but God was still so good and he, was, he still kept his word. Isaac ended up coming later. God kept his promise. I mean, I'm in the book of Genesis right now. Right now I'm reading about Jacob. Jacob marries Leah, the older sister to Rachel, but he was actually in love with Rachel. The only thing with Leah and Rachel is that Leah was able to have children. Rachel couldn't. It frustrated her. Genesis 30 verse 22 it says, Then God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her and opened her womb. He blessed her with children. He blessed her with two, Joseph and Benjamin. Being 39, number one, I don't feel like I'm 39. If you're at an age where you're already in your 40s and you just feel like, man, like I just don't have a spouse yet. I don't have a husband yet. Don't feel low. Don't feel less than. Don't feel like it's, it's not going to happen. Your faith in the Lord, remember, is what pleases him. You have to have faith in God and know that his timing is the best timing. The rest of the world feels as though they are running out of time. When you're walking with the Lord, one of the fruits of the Spirit is patience. While we're in our waiting period, what are we doing? Are we complaining about our singleness? Are we looking at other people and comparing our lives to theirs? It's not wise to compare yourself to somebody else and to see all these photos on social media, people getting married, and don't get lost in that. And focus on your walk with the Lord. Don't focus on the Lord for the blessing. We're believing God for what he's promised, yes, but then our hope is in Christ. How is our relationship with Christ? We have to trust God. What good is it if we say we believe in God, but we speak negatively over our current season? You know, we'll say things like, oh, maybe God just doesn't have this for me. Or in my case, I got to a point to where I was like, I give up, I don't want this anymore. I would scream and yell at God, like, I don't understand why this desire is here. Please take it away, please take it away. He didn't take it away. And now I'm here just chilling in it. And I understand that God's timing is the best timing. I trust God overall including his timing. He hasn't forgotten. He's going to remember us. He remembers us now. He sees us now. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs 18, 20 or 20, one of those, 20 or 22. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Are we a wife right now? Are we faithful to the Lord? Are we always seeking the Lord, drawing near to the Lord? Are we submitted to Christ? Because when you get married to your husband, the man that God has for you, you're going to have to be submitted to that man. Trusting that that man is submitting to Christ. If your husband is submitted to Christ, you are to submit to your husband. It's a beautiful thing, actually, because I used to struggle with the idea of submitting to a man. I struggled. Me, submit to a man? Oh, man, I had a really bad attitude with that. I just didn't understand. I was ignorant to what submission really looked like. In fact, submission, when the, uh, you know, wives who are submissive to their husbands, it pleases the Lord as well. Allow the Lord to continue to mold you and sanctify you. He knows what your heart's desires are because he's placed those desires there. All them good desires, he put them there with good purpose. Good purpose. Whatever God has for us is connected to our purpose. Everything that's connected to God and our walk with the Lord, it's, it's, it's purpose behind that. And it's all to glorify God. So we don't want to get to a place and we don't want to be in a position to where we are idolizing marriage and wanting to be married.
But when you're waiting on the Lord and seeking after the Lord and when he finally brings it to you, you'll be able to properly steward over your spouse, should I say.